Hey everybody, it's Susan from the Fatigue Clinic. Um, it's a Sunday morning. I've got my tea and all my research out. Um, typically, I will print my research out and I will stick it back and pull it out again to see what I can learn from it because there's always something you can learn. Um, some of the things I've come across, again, and things I've read in the past, I just wanted to kind of talk to you guys about. Um, I see an ongoing thread of this problem, I'm sure like other people do, um, as far as autoimmune disease, um, obesity, diabetes, NASH, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus. Um, there's been a huge increase in this over the last three decades. Um, and I... I have always, when I went to functional medicine school, they kind of taught us um, to get to the root of the problem. So in trying to get to the root of the problem, it involves a lot of research um, and a different thought process. So um, I, I laugh at my ER colleagues and I say, you know, we get people on the end of the, the spectrum with their heart attacks and their strokes and things like that. And if we could have gotten them 20 years before, they may not be here. So um, the reason I say that, I kind of want to share with you. Um, I worked in rheumatology for a little while after I got out of cardiology and uh, trauma, and I learned a lot. Hard field, learned a lot. But this is a nice article right here. Most of these articles, you can go to Google Scholar and print them off. Do not go to blogs. Do not go to uh, Facebook, per se, unless it's a medical professional, uh, because what you need is evidence-based medicine, okay? Every one of these articles on the back of it, like this one has got tons of citations, which means you can pull these citations off and go read those articles yourself if you want to. Um, this one has to do with autoimmunity reviews. It's an article that was written in that journal, and it says changes in intestinal tight junction permeability associated with industrial food additives explain the rising incident of autoimmune disease. And I'm going to tell you, when I was so sick, my diet changed my entire well-being more than almost anything else that I did. It was nutrition, nutrition. But this article kind of goes through and it recaptures a lot of things. Increased use of industrial consumer food added such as salt, sugar, gluten, uh, nanoparticles, um, MTGs, organic solvulants, and, and then it goes through and it talks about what it does. And it says, as a steady rise in AD, which is autoimmune disease, throughout westernized societies over the last three decades. And I'm going to tell you, children are presenting up to 10 years before their parents had problems. We think part of that is the mitochondrial DNA um, that has been mutated over and over, so they don't do well. But another huge part of this is the impermeable gut that we're um that we're having problems with from the foods that we're purchasing. So it goes through and it talks about sugars, salts, emulsifiers, uh, gluten. It goes through and takes about each one of those and it kind of tells you. And one staggering statistic it mentions, it says sugars. The percentage over the last four decades for sugars, it was plus 127% of what you were eating and it's gone up to 305. So that's um, a fairly aggressive number. So you see a lot of um, obesity. You see a lot of metabolic syndrome. You see a lot of insulin resistant. You see a lot of women coming in there doing all the right things and can't lose weight. Well, this may be part of the problem. Um, so you go through here and, and you, you see some more stuff back here. And the nanoparticles that they're doing is, um, you should be really scared about this. It, it's supposed to improve taste, color, uh, leakage of CO2 from when they um, actually put the, the product in the container. All of these are chemical related. Who knows what they're going to do other than be bad for us, okay? So, it goes on to mention, um, it talks about the intestinal type junctions right through there, okay? And what this says, it says, on a single layer of epithelial cells, that's one little layer of a little cell, so make a bunch of zeros and link them up together, okay? That separates your gut from the rest of you. When I take something into my gut, it is supposed to stay in my gut. It's not supposed to sneak out and do little things like it's supposed to. However, with inappropriate junctions to hold it together, it can do that, okay? And we have learned that since the 90s. So it talks about, um, it separates the luminal contents from the effector immune cells. That's what I just said. And it talks about carrying over the last decade. And they realized something called TJ, tight junctions, okay? is composed of a complex network of proteins. These proteins can be violated 
and they can loosen, kind of get loosey-goosey, and they open up a little bit. And when they do that, that blueberry I just ate over here, instead of going through the process correctly, it sneaks out this little junction. And when it does, my body says, whoa, what is that? You're not supposed to be in here. So it decides to have an antigen antibody reaction. And all of a sudden now I'm intolerant to blueberries, which is a shame I have five bushes in my yard. So, but when this happens, it starts to secrete um, things that break down the barrier in my gut, which lead to systemic signs and symptoms, such as uh, stiffness, joint pain, nausea for no apparent reason. You go from constipation to diarrhea. You look like an autoimmune patient. When you come in with bilateral joint pain, uh, synoviitis, you look like an autoimmune patient, okay? And two things I learned in um, rheumatology was we never checked a D level, never. Well, that's pretty bad because we have to have D to have those tight junctions, okay? So, um, and we never educated people about the food they were taking in. They still want to say it's an anecdotal note. It, it's something on the side. We don't know that it helps or not. Well, yeah, we do, folks. Wake up. Yeah, we do. Quit giving the nasty, toxic drugs and start at the root of the problem and try to make it better. Okay? So, we have intestinal permeability that increases your sensitivity, causing a systemic reaction. Okay? Then you start to secrete antibodies, like TPO antibodies, for existence. You know, your thyroid. Um, after the antibodies are secreted, after a little time, you're going to manifest the disease. So, we want to break that down backwards. Okay? And it talked about uh, seven additives that there were increased usage in. Sugars, which we knew. Salt emulsifiers, organic solvents. you know, I don't want that in my food, um, gluten, 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 gluten. People tell me I, I don't have a problem with gluten. Yes, you do. Everybody does, okay? Gluten turns into gliden. Gliden is like a little enzyme, and he just burrows a hole right through that um, membrane, okay? So, when he does that, he opens you up. Think about a balloon with a lot of holes in it, and you start leaking stuff out, okay? That's not going to be good. So, it, it has, it turns into gliden. Gliden will burrow in, releases zonulin. Zonulin is, a, is, is basically, think of zonulin as a fire. Think of it as fire because it starts to lead to a cascade of inflammatory problems because of these tight junctions that have been disturbed. They have even looked at people that were on these um, allergy diets for six months and um, said, you know, they shouldn't have these gut problems because they've been doing this right diet. Well, that's great. We do correct the diet, but then you've got to go back and you've got to fix the gut problem. You can't just act like it didn't didn't exist. You've got to give it what it needs to build up and protect you, okay? So, you got to stop the offensive agent. Then you got to treat it, okay? And it, this is a life time of living. I mean, this is not something you do one time. This is a lifestyle you have to adapt if you don't want to be sick, if you have a predilection toward autoimmune diseases, okay? So... Another little thing I like about this, it's got this little, this little thing right here. Let's see if y'all can see that. Okay. Um, so, basically what it looks like, it looks at the food sources right here. Okay. And it says bakery, meat, fish, you know, all the southern stuff, I say. And then all of these are high in glucose, salt, gluten, everything this article talks about. The seven different things it talks about are very high. It comes over here and in the gut... It starts, to, this is nice, tight junctions. That's where I want it. I want it tight. It comes through here, and it says, whoo, honey, open up like the Red Sea did, because guess what? Things are coming through. So, what we don't want is that bottom picture. We don't want loosey-goosey junctions opening up, causing problems. Yes, there's a way to fix it, but the other article that I rummaged through my literature and found um, was actually put in the American College of Gastroenterology in 2016, Human Intestinal Barrier Functions, Health, and Disease. This article links everything that this article was saying, okay? There again, you can go to Google Scholar. You can look this up yourself and read it. It's got research on the back of it. It's reference list. It's a great way to find more literature. Please don't go to the local blog and ask yourself, oh, they did this, I did that. No, go to evidence-based medicine. There is at least two decades of functional medicine out there that is evidence-based that Western medicine continues to ignore. At some point, they're going to have to quit ignoring this, and they're going to have to acknowledge the fact that it's more than just treating disease. It's preventing disease, okay? So, this article starts to, in, in the introduction right there. It starts, and it says, disruption of the barrier results in increased intestinal permeability, the leaky, the junctions, you know, loosey-goosey, 
which in turn facilitates translocation of harmful substances and pathogens into the bloodstream, okay? My blueberry that snuck through that junction is not supposed to do that. So when my body sees it, it says, hold it. We are going to stop you right here. Antigen antibody reaction. Now, it's not enough to take me to the emergency room for an allergic reaction because it's a, not an IgE reaction. It's an IgG reaction, okay? So, this IgG reaction is very low tolerant. It, progressive over, it, it, it progresses over the years. It, it led me to not being able to get up out of bed. Mind you, I held three jobs. I used to laugh. I had three boys. I had to have three jobs to feed them, put them in trucks, um, and to send them to private schools. So, it got to the point where I couldn't get up out of bed and put my feet on the ground. My feet hurt so bad. I, it was, almost, it was it, I literally cried some days. And my sweet little husband would tell me, you'll get better, you'll get better. And it's like, honey, I'm going to take that sidearm and I'm going to shoot you right upside your head. Uh, he's a cop. He knows I couldn't shoot. Uh, shoot, I couldn't hit the side of a barn. But the point was taken. So, you know, that progressed to bilateral wrist pain, elbow pain, knee pain. I, I couldn't think. Mind you, I was a trauma. I worked in trauma. I couldn't think. I rounded for cardiovascular people in ICU, and it was like everything I was doing was in slow motion. So, I finally had to, you know, I ran blood work on myself. Guess what? Mm, I had autoimmune disease. I did an echo on myself because I was so short of breath. I had a pericardial effusion. Hmm, got autoimmune disease. So that was 10 years of my life. And I feel better at 60. I'm almost 60. I feel better at 60 than I did in my 30s and 40s. And I know it is because of what I have done and where I had to go to find how to get better. And, and that is one of the reasons our clinic is around today. I think God led me there. He let me get sick. He let me learn how to get unsick. So, um, it talks about, there again, the tight junctions and the permeability um, that is broken. And it gives you a cute little picture like this one. You know, a lot of them you may not be able to see that one. Um, but it, there again, it shows you these are the things right here that are bad, okay? So, it shows you cytokines. Well, what do we know about cytokines? We're, we've got COVID-19 out there. We're talking about cytokine storm, right? Well, cytokines start in autoimmune disease. Um, basically, it's an internal pathway for inflammatory mechanisms. It talks about T-cells. Well, what's a T-cell, Susan? Well, a T-cell comes from the thymus, and it's part of your immune system. And if you don't have them, you're going to be in trouble, okay? Just like B-cells come from the bone, there again, they're another part of your immune system. So, it talks about mast cell activation. I'm sure you have heard about mast cell activation activation and allergy type things. So, when that blueberry comes through there, he's caused a heck of a lot of problems, all right? So, we got to go mop up all the problems. In 1995, Gordon and co-workers developed a model in a mouse which illustrated the gut the gut deficit, the barrier deficit caused inflammation. That was 1995. Quick catch up. This is 2020, all right, so if we can't take this research and build on it, then uh, I'm, I'm sad. I'm very sad. Okay, so in the absence of an immune regulation, low levels of bacterial antigens, my blueberry, okay, gets in and is a sufficient trigger of inflammation, okay, because it shouldn't be there. And my body is very good about saying, if you're not going to be here, you got to go. Hence the reason autoimmune disease, all right? So, this article goes on and it talks about IBS, it talks about Crohn's, some of our better known autoimmune diseases, it talks about stress. How many times have we talked about stress and how it can trigger an internal cascade? Anything that you, in rheumatology, we could go back a year and almost find a trigger. Within that year, you had had a death, you had had a major trauma, you had had a major stressor, um, something that triggered the autoimmune cascade, the inflammatory cascade. And, it, and once it was over, it said, what do I do now? So, it finds something else to do instead of quieting down. So, the lipopolysaccharides has been identified as a factor involved in the onset and progression of inflammatory disease. LPS is what you see this as. It is a potent inflammatory, i.e., it is kerosene on the fire, folks. You can't eat some of the stuff we're eating if you have a genetic predilection to have an autoimmune disease. I've gone back to the 1700s, and I have found death certificates in my family for rheumatoid arthritis. My mama had it. My grandmama had it. My poor little sister has it. So, the only thing different is, is my lifestyle and what I have chosen, how I've chosen to eat, how I've chosen to do supplements, how I've chosen to utilize the herbs that God has given me. So, it goes through here, and it there again... 
it validates the fact that gut permeability is out there. And I'm going to tell you a new rising thing. Well, not new. It's been out there a while, at least 10 years that I've seen it. NASH. Completely, these people coming in here with um, their tummies are out to here, and um, of course, they're insulin insufficient. A lot of them are diabetic, but their liver enzymes are up, okay? Sjogren's can do that. I got two patients that Sjogren's will get that liver every time. We get them in there, we get them on the biomat, we get them glutathione, we clean up their diet, and they're better, okay? I've seen that happen over and over and over. Um, well, my nurse, who I dearly love, has NASH, and she knows her gut's not right, and she's working on it and working on it and working on it, and I hope it encourages her to go back. She has a huge interest in nutrition and get a functional uh, degree in nutrition um, because I think it would help her a lot. It would help me a lot. It would help the clinic a lot, but um, there are some gut toxins that they are, their their prime candidate is the liver, Okay. And I don't know if you've ever seen one. NAC, the big thing about NASH, non-alcoholic liver cirrhosis, is it turns to cancer. And I'm going to tell you, I've seen many a cancer patients with liver. You don't want to, you don't want to go through it, and you don't want your family to go through it. This, it, at this junction, when you are here, you can turn it around. You just got to do the right stuff. You got to know what the right stuff is, but you can turn it around. Okay, so um, you, you got to, you know, I laugh and tell people about the grocery store, the outer edge. You, you shouldn't be on the inner edge unless you're getting your pampers, uh, your dog food, um, and then some people shouldn't be on the inner edge for that. Uh, coffee and tea is on the inner. Other than that, everything on the outside is the living food. Everything on the inside is nothing but death in a package, okay? So, this, they talked about, and here's where they talked about food allergies. They took 20 patients with food hypersensitivity who had been on an allergen-free diet for six months, okay? And they found a three-fold increase compared to healthy controls in gut permeability. Now, mind you, they'd been on the right diet for six months, so what's missing? We stopped the offensive agent, but we didn't treat it. So we got to treat it. That's the reason I think our gut program works so well. Um, we use uh, we use a lot of Ben Lynch material. We use a lot of Josh Axe material. My, my thing is people are starting to uh, get them to buy these textbooks. We review. We use them as textbooks. We use them as guidance. We use a Terry Walls program. We have just taken out there and um, Puttermeyer. I mean, we have just pulled from these folks that have been out there, you know, trying to get America to listen. And I'm going to tell you, our folks do great. The ones that stick with it, they do great. I've seen them reverse things. Um, I don't even make rheumatoid antibodies anymore. I checked myself last year and I have none. Um, now, another thing this article says in conclusion, it says depression. How big is depression nowadays? Okay. They have found a disturbed intestinal barrier seems to have a role in depression. Okay, towards the LPS derived from gram negative bacteria. Trust me, you don't want gram negative bacteria in there. Um, going through the gut microbiota have been detected in patients with chronic depression. Well, what do we know also about the gut? It makes most of the serotonin, doesn't it? 90% of the serotonin. So these, these drugs that we use, although good band-aids, they're not fixing the problem. So we've got to get lower and we've got to fix the problem. So if we look at all of this, we truly have an advantage if we use food, nutrition, um, herbs, teas to help us heal. Um, you're going to spend your money in two ways. Going to the doctor, surgical procedures you might not have had to have, and pharmaceuticals. Or you can turn around and you can spend your money and invest it in yourself. You can buy the right food. You can get the right supplements. You can use the right teas. Um, you can have a lifestyle change and you can be healthier than you are now, okay? Um, we've got some more videos coming up. One's going to be, uh, I think, COVID-19 and some of the um, things that we have found that help. We're going to try to get that out in the next few days. But one of the biggest things you can do while you're at home now is start learning. Start learning how to help yourself be a better you, how to build a better immune system. That's what it's all about, is building your immune system. So it's not about these vaccines. It's not about the health department trying to come up with a, a vaccine for COVID-19. It's just going to turn around and turn into COVID-20, and then it's just going to mutate. You've got to look at it a different way. Stay home, stay healthy, and look for our next video.